Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post Interview. I am here joined by Mr. John Hargrave, the publisher of Bitcoin Market Journal and the CEO of Media Shower. Welcome, sir. Thank you. So let's start with an introduction. Tell us about yourself. Well, I am the publisher of Bitcoin Market Journal, <laughs> which yes. is the leading blockchain investing publication. Mm -hmm. And I'm also the CEO of Media Shower, which is a blockchain media company. And our goal is to make blockchain easy to understand, mm -hmm. easy to use, and easy to invest. We're helping educate everybody mm -hmm. on what the blockchain is and how to get involved. Now, you brought up an interesting point. You're striving to make the concept of blockchain easier, right? Yes. Then how would you define blockchain technology? <laughs> is it a disruption? Is it an evolution? Is it a, what is it? I'll tell you a funny story. I was doing an interview for a radio station in Boston, mm -hmm. where I'm from. And the producer of the radio show said, we're gonna edit this interview down to 10 seconds that we're gonna run during <laughs> drive time radio. Mm -hmm. He said, so could you just tell me briefly what blockchain is? Mm -hmm. And I said, in 10 seconds? <laughs> no, no, I can't. Uh, my friend Miko had a good definition. So he said, uh, Bitcoin is like open source money, mm -hmm. right? Money that anyone can participate in. And he said the blockchain is kind of like open source data. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that, how open source software has revolutionized software and opened it up so that anyone can contribute to it, the blockchain is very similar. Opening up the world of data mm -hmm. from being privately controlled by centralized institutions to being open to all, mm -hmm. open source data. That would, you would define blockchain as open source data? It's a good way of thinking about it, yes. Now, what about Bitcoin? People, some people believe that it's going to revolutionize, change the way we think about currencies. How would you see, what, how do you see Bitcoin? Well, I see Bitcoin as like open source money. Mm -hmm. I see it as a type of digital currency that anyone can use that's not controlled by a central institution. Now, will it become the dominant <laughs> currency of the human race? Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't predict the future. But it certainly has spawned uh, a whole new asset class mm -hmm. of digital currencies and of blockchain tokens. And explaining those in plain language is part of our mission mm -hmm. at uh, Bitcoin Market Journal. Now, Bitcoin Market Journal is defined as a investor's manifesto, yes. like the Carmax Communist Manifesto. So uh, <laughs> what does Bitcoin Journal Market try to tell or you know, spread out? What message does it try to spread out specifically? Yes. Well, first of all, we say think about blockchain investing as part of an overall investment portfolio. Mm -hmm. So a classic conservative investing strategy would be stocks and bonds, half stock, half bonds. No derivatives? <laughs> Probably okay, I won't not get into that. <laughs> for most ordinary investors. Mm -hmm. But you can have a small slice, a percentage mm -hmm. of your portfolio that we call your mad money, your <laughs> alternative investments. Right. And that small slice is what can go into digital assets like Bitcoin, mm -hmm. as well as other uh, altcoins, alternatives to Bitcoin, like Ethereum and Ripple and mm -hmm. EOS and so forth. And so thinking about it that way, not I'm going to put all my money into Bitcoin, <laughs> But I'm right. going to put a very small slice to kind of hedge against the risk of the overall portfolio and to provide myself another growth opportunity. We've shown that if you put 10% into Bitcoin three years ago, your portfolio of $10,000 would have grown to about $42,000. That's a 4x return mm -hmm. in just three years. And that is the beauty of investing in blockchain. But do it sensibly. <clears throat> You mentioned that you're hedging against something. Investing in Bitcoin is managing your risks, right? So what are you managing your risk against? Is it the failure of the whole currency system, the government-owned currency system that we have today? Right, well, the idea is that digital assets like Bitcoin are not correlated with other assets mm -hmm. like stocks. What that means is they march to a different beat. As stocks might go like this, Bitcoin is going in a different 
direction. Mm -hmm. And that means that whereas stocks and bonds have an inverse relationship, they're inversely correlated, right. Bitcoin provides a different kind of risk profile. So it's a hedge. And in that way, Bitcoin, as well as all the other altcoins, this whole <laughs> asset class, can actually provide a hedge against risk, provided mm -hmm. again <laughs> that you do it in a very small and controlled manner. Control 10% you mentioned? Well, anywhere between 2 and 10%, depending on mm -hmm. your risk tolerance and also your age. You're young, mm -hmm. so you could probably take a little <laughs> more risk. Myself, I don't know, maybe a little less. Now, the presentation you gave was inspiring, interesting, by far the most. So would you care to share that to our audience as well? The whole presentation? <laughs> Just a simple summary of it. Right now? <laughs> Well, I believe that we need to make Bitcoin and blockchain easy to understand, easy to use, and easy to invest. Mm -hmm. And that's our mission. That is what we're trying to do. And I believe that a time is coming very soon when we will be able to offer investing opportunities and ways for ordinary people to very easily contribute uh, to their blockchain investment portfolio, mm -hmm. almost like an automatic withdrawal from your uh, paycheck each month that would mm -hmm. go into a retirement plan or a private right. pension plan. We'll see those kinds of instruments that will be used for blockchain. And that is a very big deal. That's yes, a yes, big indeed. deal. And I see that as inevitable. This will happen. And we're trying to make it happen in a, in a positive way. Now, cryptocurrency back in the days was a simple investment. You pay, you get your tokens, right? Yeah. But nowadays there are a lot of ways or types that you can invest in. There's futures, there's OTC trading, there's just simple exchange, there's decentralized exchange, funds, managers. Now, one controversy that is rising up in the current crypto ecos ecosystem is ICO versus STO mm -hmm. or ICO IEO for that matter. Now, when it comes to STO and ICO, it's a different terminology, right? Would you care to explain that? And in simple terms, as simple as you can. <laughs> so, so an ICO is an initial coin offering right. where someone offers a token uh, that will be used to fund a new blockchain project or company. Mm -hmm. The problem with ICOs is that we're not sure what they are. Mm -hmm. Are they stocks? Are they securities? How should they be treated? How should they be regulated? Are they legal? Mm -hmm. In China, ICOs have been banned. So an STO, a security token offering, is uh, an idea to make them real securities. In other words, there's something underneath it, some underlying value mm -hmm. that backs this new token. Now with an ICO, you may have a company that's brand new, mm -hmm. <laughs> that has no products, that has no <laughs> users on its blockchain. Mm -hmm. So where is the value in that? But with an STO, there is a real company or there is a, an asset like real estate or fine art or precious metals, gold, mm -hmm. uh, or commodities like oil. There's something underneath it mm -hmm. that is being tokenized. In other words, being broken into pieces and shared on the blockchain. And you can buy those tokens with an STO with the full faith that this is a legal security that falls under current securities laws and that's a very big deal now securities uh, one how should i say this one profit one might receive from investing in a type of security is dividends right mm -hmm. now when it comes to crypto and dividends as well as all the legal issues it can get tricky and countries all over the world are pondering upon how to determine where the line is drawn yes. now how would how would you define or where would you draw the line when it comes to STOs? Should it be tr treated as a normal security or as an asset or should it be something else? Well, my philosophy on blockchain is let's take the existing model mm -hmm. that everyone right. has in their head and let's see if we can move it one step forward. Let's see if we can just marry traditional securities with the blockchain. So I talk a lot about smart stocks. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you had a company that uh, offered stock to the public, but that stock uh, was measured or recorded on the blockchain. So I sell you a share of the stock, and that is recorded on the blockchain. It's transparent, it's immutable, 
If we were to do that, it would open up all kinds of possibilities. So we could start to better organize shareholders. Mm -hmm. It would be easier to get shareholders to vote. We would have transparency into who owns the stock in a company. And that's a big deal. So let's take our existing securities that everyone understands mm -hmm. and let's evolve them one step forward. And it's up to us mm -hmm. to lead that, to paint the vision of how that can be done. Now, one interesting question or subject was raised during your panel talk, which was the intrinsic value of Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. Some believe that there is an intrinsic value to Bitcoin. Some believe it as a store of value. Some see it as a utility. Now, where, how would you define it? Well, intrinsic value is very tricky because what gives anything its intrinsic value? I have, have here some Korean won. Mm -hmm. what, what is the value of this and why does it have value? Well, there's many answers, but at the end of the day, we trust that it has value. And it's that trust that gives anything value. Mm -hmm. It's a shared trust between us. And agreement because some a an community agreement. agreed upon the thing Absolutely. that is valuable, right? That's right. So trust and agreement are kind of the, the Siamese twins <laughs> of giving, right. giving these assets value. And that's why everything we do in this space, we try to build trust. Many people still don't trust Bitcoin. Mm. They associate it with criminal behavior and bad <laughs> things. Yes, yes. And so we need to build trust in these assets as something that not only is good and useful, but also is going to be more valuable in the future. So mm -hmm. everything we do, the way I talk to you, the way I dress, it's intended to build trust. And that is the goal, my charge to everyone out there, is to help build trust in these new digital assets. When we do that, we all win. Mm -hmm. Everyone wins. Mm -hmm. Now, not only are you a publisher, you're also the CEO of a media blockchain media company. Yes. So I'm not asking you to give any price predictions or anything else, but how would you predict the 2019? Because 2018 was a harsh bear market to every crypto traders and projects all over the world. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in the media, we're calling this time crypto winter. Yes, winter is coming. <laughs> uh, well, I think winter's here, my <laughs> friend. And I like that phrase because what follows winter? Spring. And so it is inevitable mm -hmm. that seasons will change. Mm -hmm. It is inevitable that markets will change. The only thing we can be certain of is that these markets will change. Now, to me, the question is, when spring comes, mm -hmm. when the frost begins to thaw, mm -hmm. where do we want to be? Where do we want to be positioned in this new market? Mm -hmm. You are also building a media company in the blockchain space yes. because you believe and you see, you have a vision that this is going to grow and it is going to spring again. Right. That's what we want as well, is to mm -hmm. be perfectly positioned that when this ecosystem thrives and grows and the rabbits are mating out in the field, <laughs> that we will be in a position to enjoy it all. Mm -hmm. Now, not the rabbits mating. <laughs> right, that right. sounded weird. <laughs> now, there are a lot of Koreans who are waiting for the winter to end and the spring to come. Yes. And Bitcoin Market Journal is a investor's guide. Yes. Now, what would be your advice, finishing up on the interview, what would be your advice to crypto traders here in Korea waiting for the winter to end? <laughs> well, I don't give financial advice. <laughs> I'm not a financial advisor. But what I can say is look for underlying value. Mm -hmm. Look for value and look for projects that are adding real value to the world. I personally don't think anyone can time the market. I don't course, think you know, anyone knows any kind of or has an algorithm that can always make money. So to me, the best strategy and approach is to look for projects with value and to invest in the long term for, with those projects. And if you don't have time to do that, probably the best thing to do is to buy a, a basket or an overall <laughs> portfolio of yes. the top altcoins mm -hmm. and that is probably uh, going to be the most profitable strategy 
in, in the long term. Well, Hope thank you so value. much for your insight. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. John Hargrave, the CEO of Media Shower and the publisher at Bitcoin Market Journal.